I was in a car accident, but I'm back and I'm still pretty. Okay, let's talk about this. Michael Myers versus Kylo Ren. Why? That doesn't make any sense. Well, I'm gonna make it make sense. Of the big three slashers, Michael Myers is the first. But why are we talking about him in this video? As far as fight scenes, has Michael Myers ever had a fight scene? I mean, you know, he fought Buster Rhymes that time. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Halloween Ends, but let me break this down. In order to properly review a fight scene, you need to watch the whole movie. That way you know what your characters have been through, what your characters are capable of. The struggle. Michael Myers in Halloween Ends comes out there looking like Blade. One of the coolest intros, coolest shots of any slasher movie. And then he proceeds to just Chinese connection all these firemen, right? Later on in the movie, gets jumped by the entire town, not the whole town, but a group, a mob. They beat him down, they beat him down with bats, iron, they shoot him, they stab him, they do all these things, they kick his ass, he gets up, Chinese connection, destroys everybody. In that same movie, he ends up in a house with Laurie Strode's granddaughter and her boyfriend. He beats the hell out of her boyfriend, breaks his neck, throws Laurie Strode's granddaughter down the stairs. She breaks her leg or injures her leg to the point where I believe it's broken. Michael Myers strolls on down the stairs and then he confronts her. He gets his knife, he goes to stab her. She is able to stop his attempt with one hand. She is on the ground with a broken leg. She is then doing that to distract Michael Myers so that Michael Myers can get hit in the back. All right, so let me break this down. First off, we have this dude, Michael Myers, who let's say he's just a regular guy. Girl is smaller than he is, broken leg, and prone. He has the advantage as far as strength, the advantage as far as leverage. And since she's trying to distract him so someone could hit him in the back, he also has the advantage of giving her his full attention. She's not even giving him her 100% full, full attention. Now, let's put Michael Myers in that situation. Michael Myers is five, six times stronger than the average man, right? For all accounts, uh, a winter soldier. My question is, who wrote this scene? Did the people who write it and put it together, do they not like Michael Myers on a personal level? Do they touch on a power that Laurie Strode may have or the Strode bloodline? Because obviously, her granddaughter is stronger than Michael Myers. One hand, one hand. I don't care if that was a dude who was working out, even if that was Schwarzenegger. If he got a broken leg and he's on the ground, you never know, you never know. It could be the person who put it together. It could be the people who wrote the script, the, 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 the director. Could be, you don't know what the situation is. Here's a clip from a fight scene I did with my students. What's wrong with this picture? You can see that I block the sword, then I disarm with that weak ass disarm. And then dude could have hit me with the sword. Why didn't he hit me with the sword? Because that's the take I decided to use. I wanted the take where you could see the whole fight scene from end to end. We messed up that part, I left it in there. We're just having fun on a Saturday. A multi-million dollar franchise is not on our heads. Check this part out. Why'd I block like that? When I had a closer hand that could have blocked that strike. The reason why is because my student's arm, that was his bad arm. And the original block that was planned was hurting his arm. So since he was throwing that punch with his bad arm, I used a different type of block, which did two things. It didn't injure his arm, but also if you see, I am kind of guiding his arm in the right direction because since it's his injured arm and he's not so used to throwing a punch with that arm i'm helping him by kind of putting it in the right spot you never know what the situation is i would love to know what the situation was on the set of halloween kills the stunt coordinator who did this if this was his her idea they don't know what the fuck they're doing or the people who were behind it or whatever who may have changed what this person brought to the table don't know what the fuck they're doing. Did you guys ever watch the show? So I think that that's interesting. Now, how does that relate to Kylo Ren? Okay, have you seen Star Wars? <laughs> All right, in the sequel trilogy, we got a similar situation. Let me take you to The Last Jedi because I'm supposed to be taking you to The Last Jedi because that was our next movie to review. 
In The Last Jedi, Kylo Ren fights Luke Skywalker, but he fights his force projection. Did you notice in this scene that Kylo Ren wasn't able to land one strike on Luke Skywalker's force projection? Sure, if he had landed a strike, it would have gone through it and he would have been like, aha, well, that's funny, that's odd. Okay, but he wasn't able to land any strikes. What does that tell us? That tells us that Luke Skywalker was able to make Kylo Ren look like a white belt while sitting on a rock on another planet in another part of the galaxy. Imagine how bad he would have made him look if he was this much closer. Imagine what he could have done if he had shown up there in person. Once again, you gotta watch the whole movie because he says in the movie, in this same movie where he's able to do this to Kylo Ren, embarrass him in this way, he says, you expect me to just show up, fight the whole First Order by myself with a laser sword or some shit like that, right? He says something like that, right? Okay, cool. Then he proceeds to kind of pretty much do that here in this scene. Here's the catch. We also see Kylo Ren in this same movie talking to Ray's force projection and he tells that, he tells Ray, oh, the power it will take to do this would kill you. Cool, okay. So we know Luke is super powerful to be able to do this. Also, if you watch the whole movie, you know that Princess Leia is just over there. And we know that Princess Leia is so powerful that she can get blown out of a spaceship, survive in space with no oxygen and all that stuff, and then fly back to the ship. So we know Princess, we, we got Luke Skywalker, who's extremely powerful standing there, and Princess Leia. And we're just going by the scene, we know Kylo Ren ain't shit. Oh, oh, oh. Compared to them, compared to Luke at least. We haven't seen Leia fight him, but let's say Luke Skywalker had been this much close. No, let's say Luke Skywalker had shown up in person. Let's say that, okay? Because Ray, you know, the, the, the Millennium, the, millennium, the Falcon was there, so he could have hitched a ride. Let's say he had shown up in person. What about all that uh, laser fire from the Adat walkers or the gorilla walkers or whatever they are? What would he do then? Well, he shows up in person, stays his happy ass behind the barricade, behind the wall, does the force projection from there. When all that smoke and sand and dust kicks up, he just goes out there and swaps. And now he's standing out there ready. Kylo Ren comes down there, and now Kylo Ren is facing the actual Luke Skywalker, the one that doesn't have to concentrate so hard from a rock on another planet in another part of the galaxy. And that Luke completely kills him. And if he's having, let's say he has trouble doing that, Leia's right there. Leia steps out. Matter of fact, let's have him step out together. In order to properly review a fight scene, you need to watch the whole movie. That's all I'm saying. You need to watch the whole movie. Um, <laughs> that goes for you people who are making movies too, though. Y'all should probably watch your movies. Uh, I was talking to one of my buddies who uh, worked on a movie uh, with Michael J. White, and he was... And I asked him, I asked him, I was like, all right, did they give you the script, you know, before you made the fights? Because he was, he helped create the fight scene. Uh, if not, did it all himself. I think he helped. I'm not 100% sure, but he either helped or he did it all himself. I said, did they, did they give you the script before, you know, so you know what the hell's going on, you know, and they did that for them. So I haven't seen the fight scene yet. Oh, trust me, I'm going to review it when it, it comes out. Uh, but, uh, and he knows I'm going to be real truthy. So... Uh, be prepared for that. There are so many moving parts that can make a scene terrible. This scene in The Last Jedi and that scene in Halloween Kills, two of the worst fight scenes I've seen in, I'm, I'm over 20, in, in, in 20 years. Now you know I'm at least 20 years old. Um, long time. If you if you're out if you're making something out there and you have a fight scene in your thing, go ahead and read your own material. It'll help you with that fight scene to tell that story, to continue the story in that fight scene. Now that we got that out the way, we are in the last Jedi now. We gotta review the fight scene in that red room, uh Snoke's room. We gotta do Kylo Ren and Ray versus everybody. And I'm gonna tell you this, 
I liked it when I saw it in the theater. And I can say I'd still have some positive things to say about that fight scene. Until then, I'm gonna try to stay safe. Y'all stay safe. Mofos be running the lights around here. Peace.